Whether exploring them or just looking at them from afar, mountains have always fascinated us. And there's good reason. These huge, magical-looking natural structures can harbor some truly incredible secrets. From a strange, seemingly supernatural cave to a waterfall that flows up, it's time to put your hiking boots back on and get ready to discover even more secrets hidden inside mountains. Treasure Mountain Come on, everyone's fantasized about finding hidden treasure before. But back in 2013, one man's lucky find turned into something much darker. Whilst climbing the French peak of Mont Blanc, the man noticed a metal box poking from the snow. Interested, he dug it out, opened it up, and discovered a huge hoard of emeralds, rubies, and sapphires inside. In astonishment, the man took the box and carried it down the mountain. But rather than keep the treasure, he turned it into the police and was told it was worth over $160,000. Damn, I'm not sure if I'd have done the same. Or maybe I would have, after knowing where the jewels actually came from. You see, it turns out that some 47 years before in 1966, an airplane carrying 117 people had crashed into the mountain. Sadly, nobody survived. The crash has been the subject of conspiracy theories ever since because the plane was carrying the father of India's nuclear industry, Homi Baba. Some speculate it wasn't a crash at all, but that the plane was purposefully shot down. Either way, ever since, all kinds of objects and possessions have been found scattered in the area around the crash site, so the jewels were almost definitely one of the passengers. Just who's exactly remains a mystery though, as nobody has ever claimed to have any knowledge of them. So in 2021, it was declared the climber was allowed to keep $84,000 worth of the jewels. Man, in this case, it really did pay to be honest. Although I'd be worried they were cursed. What? I've seen films. No one ever finds that much treasure without it being cursed. Hidden Colossus down at the base of the Apennine Mountains in Tuscany, Italy, there's a very strange sight to behold. At one end of an overgrown pond stands a huge 36-foot tall man. Not a living man, of course. He's been carved completely from stone, like something straight out of a fantasy novel. His name? The Apennine Colossus. Built in the late 1580s by Italian Renaissance sculptor Giambologna, the Colossus is a personification of the mountains that rise above it in the distance. But there's far more to this sculpture than meets the eye. At the base, there's a small cave that leads inside, and if you walked in, you'd realize the whole thing is actually hollow. Indeed, a series of hidden networks and caves branch out over three separate levels inside the statue. One has an octagonal fountain dedicated to the Greek goddess Tethys inside, whilst another chamber is big enough for a small orchestra to play in. The inside of the giant's head has by far the most interesting feature, though. Here, you can light a fireplace, causing smoke to escape through the Colossus's nostrils and billow out into the sky. At night, the glow from the fire illuminates the statue's eyes, making it look even more magical, almost as if he was alive. Man, if I stumbled across that, I think on impulse, I'd prepare myself for one epic impending boss fight. The High Life What's your dream home? I've got a few, but none of them are chiseled a dizzying 1.7 miles high into the rock face of Monte Cristallo in Italy's Dolomite Mountains. Like, you know, this one is. The cliffside house is as mystifying as it is terrifying. I mean, who built it? How? And why? While its origins apparently go as far back as the First World War, clever Italian soldiers scaled the mountain and built the place as a spot to rest, as it was safe from enemy fire and gave them a strategic overwatch position. It certainly would have been nigh on impossible to attack. The only way to access the danger den is using a treacherous mountain trail. Okay, but that only makes how it was built even more perplexing. And well, we don't actually know for sure. Oddly, there aren't any records of it. Hmm. But considering it was probably built over 100 years ago, you can bet the job would have been tough as hell. Not only was all the brick and wood precariously carried up this sheer mountain trail, but then it was actually put together up there. 
all while under the constant threat of being spotted by the enemy. Whoa. Nowadays, brave climbers can tackle the winding trail up to the house without fear of enemy insurgents. But I think I'm gonna pass anyways, thanks. You definitely shouldn't pass on hitting those like and subscribe buttons though. That way you'll never miss another one of my amazing fact-based videos again. All done? All right, onwards and upwards. Water rise. You've heard of a waterfall, sure, but now get ready for a water rise. No, this footage isn't being played backwards. That's a waterfall flowing upwards. Believe it or not, this isn't magic or some kind of illusion. It's actually caused by supremely powerful winds blowing against the cliff face and being channeled up the rocks by the unique shape they form. The chances of the wind being strong enough and the rocks being the right shape are super slim. But the UK's kinder downfall in the sprawling, semi-mountainous moors of Derbyshire has the exact right conditions for it to occur, and it looks like something out of Lord of the Rings. Hopefully Derbyshire's not full of man-flesh-hungry orcs, though. Devilish Devilus The Greek capital city of Athens is steeped in history, culture, and myth. But over on the nearby mountain of Penteli, there lies a little-known cave cut deep inside the mountain, which is shrouded in even more mystery than the city itself. Or at least some say that. Known as Devilus Cave, it's marked by an old Byzantine church at the opening. Past this is the cave itself, which leads to a series of dark, uninhabited tunnels that run through the mountain. These are creepy enough without all the stories surrounding the cave leading into them. People have reported their electronics failing after walking inside, water flowing in seemingly impossible directions, and even ghostly apparitions stalking the caverns. What's more, there are rumors of plenty of people going in, never to return. Whether any of this is true or not, well, we don't know. But we do know the cave was sealed off by the government in the 1980s under the pretense of digging new tunnels. However, the digging suddenly stopped without explanation and the cave was abandoned. Nobody knows why and the strange circumstances only fueled the cave's spooky reputation further. Indeed, satanic cults are said to have worshipped in its dark depths and who can blame them? Can you think of a better cave to bring your devil-worshipping followers into? There's only one way to know for sure if any of the rumors are true though, heading into the cave yourself. And I am happy to leave that particular bit of research up to somebody else. Culver Hole If you've ever been to Wales in the UK, you'll know it's got a whole lot of castles. In fact, it's got more castles per square mile than anywhere else in the world. So if you happen to see this in a tall rocky crevice on the coast of Swansea, you'd be forgiven for thinking it's some kind of castle. Spoiler alert, it's not. The strange structure was built back in the 13th century and was actually used as a dovecote, meaning a place to house pigeons and doves. Back then, society's elite kept the birds as status symbols as well as for food and manure. Having one slyly built into the side of a cliff, though, is undoubtedly odd. As you can probably tell, this is no ordinary dovecote. The impending 60-foot stone wall was built in front of Culver Hole Cave, an ancient cave with a myriad of mysterious tales associated with it. Legend says smugglers and a powerful local brigand called John Lucas used it to hide their stolen goods in. There's apparently even a secret tunnel at the back of the blocked-off cave, big enough to ride an entire horse through. Supposedly, Lucas built the tunnel in the 16th century to ferry his ill-gotten goods from the cave to a nearby building, which now lies in ruins. There's no sign of any tunnel by the ruin, though, so if you want to try and find it, you'll have to scale the wall at Culver Hole and climb in through one of the windows. How wholesome. Tralian Back in April 2022, something happened over Lazy Mountain in Alaska that would set the internet alight with wild conspiracy theories. On the morning of April 7th, Alaskans suddenly noticed a strange column of smoke blazing across the sky. The weird-looking formation carried on for several minutes with tendril-like appendages flying behind it before it seemingly crashed somewhere behind the mountain. It didn't take long for people to post pics of the phenomenon online and the theories came flooding in. From meteor to UFO and everything in between. 
If I'd have seen that thing streaking across the sky in front of me, I might have thought Judgment Day was coming. In response to the reports, Alaska State Troopers got in a chopper and flew around the area in search of anything suspicious. They found nothing. Nada. No evidence of a plane crash, a meteor, or anything alien. Any guesses what they concluded then? Well, authorities reckon it was just an airplane's contrail. Contrails are trails of condensed water left by aircraft exhaust as they fly miles above the Earth. But hey, that didn't look anything like a normal one, right? The thing is, contrails can be massively affected by the atmosphere of the air they're formed in. If the air is humid, a contrail will usually stick around far longer and look much thicker than if the air is dry. So the atmospheric conditions plus the sun hitting it in a certain way made the Alaskan contrail look mega weird. But alas, that's all it was, a contrail. Unless you think the Alaskan state troopers were lying, of course. Perplexing Pillar Think back, you remember the crazy cliff house in Italy's Dolomite Mountains? Well, would you rather live there or here? Yep, over in a mountainous expanse of land in Georgia, the country, not the state, there's a super precarious looking structure built at the top of a 130 foot limestone pillar. I'm getting dizzy just looking at it. But what's it doing here? Why would anyone want to live somewhere you can only reach by way of a horrifyingly dangerous vertical steel ladder? The truth is the building isn't just a house, it's actually a church. People reckon that there would have originally been two churches atop the pillar, dating somewhere from the 5th to the 10th centuries. It's likely they were built so high in order for monks to practice asceticism, a form of extreme self-discipline where they'd isolate themselves and throw aside sensual pleasures in pursuit of spiritual goals. Eventually though, the churches fell into disrepair, until 2005 that is, when they were rebuilt as one. Nowadays, a monastery sits at the base of the pillar as well as the church atop it. Monks still make the alarming ascent as part of their pilgrimage, but nobody else is allowed to do so. I'm not complaining. I get scared enough every time I go up a stepladder. The Mystery of Kenny Veach I love a good mystery. So when I came across the strange, sad case of Las Vegas resident and hiker Kenny Veach, I knew I'd have to share it with you. It all started back in 2014, when YouTube user Snakebit McGee posted a comment on a video describing an odd experience they'd had in an M-shaped cave. Apparently, they'd been hiking over a mountainous part of Nevada when they came across a weirdly shaped hollow in the rocks. Out of sheer intrigue, they entered and were shocked to feel some kind of vibrations passing through their body. The further they went in, the stronger the vibrations got, until suddenly a terrible fear gripped them and they fled the scene. Unsurprisingly, the comment blew up on YouTube with dozens of eager people responding and demanding Snakebit return to the cave. One sinister commenter, however, warned him that if he went back, he'd never get out. Regardless, Snakebit did go back, or at least he tried to. It turns out Snakebit McGee was actually avid amateur explorer Kenny Veach. Kenny posted this video of himself attempting to return to the cave. You know, my truck's way out there. There's no roads. There's no trails. It's a pretty rough terrain. So uh, hopefully I'll find it. It's shaped like a big M. It's a big cave that looks just like a gigantic M. In the end, he didn't find the cave, but he promised to try again. Only this time, he never came back. In fact, after embarking on that third mission, he completely vanished and still hasn't been found. His cell phone was discovered near where he'd filmed the first video but there were no clues to his whereabouts on it. Internet sleuths went wild. Some hypothesized that he'd stumbled across a secret entrance to the mysterious government facility Area 51 and been silenced because of it. Others simply reckon he got lost. His ex-girlfriend, however, sadly suspects his depression might have had something to do with his disappearance. Damn, what do you think? Whatever the answer, the whole thing is undeniably strange. Let me know down below. Troll Hole Even if you've never been to Norway, you'll probably know about some of its rich mythological heritage. The legend of Thor, for example, can be traced back there. It's not surprising then that the tiny enigmatic island of Torget in the north of the country has garnered a legend all of its own. The island is dominated by a towering granite mountain known as Torghatten. 
and smack bang in the center of Torquaton is a weird, perfectly round hole cutting all the way through the structure. When the sun shines through it, the whole scene looks surreal, magical even. Legend says that the hole was formed a long time ago when trolls roamed the land. One troll called Hestmanen was riding his horse when he saw a beautiful lady troll called Lekamoya. Wishing to woo Lekamoya, Hestmanen began galloping towards her, but she wasn't interested and ran away. In frustration, Hestmanen took a bow from his side, pulled the string back, and fired an arrow straight at the fleeing she-troll. Good to know male behavior hasn't changed since troll times. However, out of nowhere, a third troll stepped in to save her, tossing his hat in the direction of the arrow. He succeeded, and the arrow pierced the hat instead, knocking it off course as it did so. The holy hat landed, but the sun rose at the same time, turning the hat and all of the trolls to stone. Torghatten is the hat, and the other trolls are the surrounding mountains. Or at least that's how the legend goes. The reality is probably less exciting. Scientists reckon that thousands of years ago, in the Scandinavian Ice Age, ice and water eroded loose rocks in the middle of the mountain. These eventually disappeared, but the harder rocks around them remained, forming the odd tunnel. But what do they know? I'm Team Troll. The Poot Palace when it comes to political leaders, few are shrouded in as much secrecy as Russian President Vladimir Putin. However, very few things stay secret forever. Back in 2010, a Russian whistleblower wrote an open letter exposing the construction of a huge secret palace in the country, supposedly commissioned by Putin. Although the letter initially caused outrage, it fell out of the public eye until 2021, when Putin's opposition released a documentary about the mysterious building. The vast mansion is tucked away in a heavily forested part of Krasnodar Krai, on the coast of western Russia. Guarded by supposedly impregnable fences and an armed security force, it's part of a wider estate that has its own church, amphitheater, and even a no-fly zone imposed above it. Putin claims he has nothing to do with it, but that sounds pretty suspicious to me. Especially when you realize the whole thing cost a colossal $1.4 billion and the people working there are banned from taking mobile phones in. Right. Oh, and there's a secret entrance too, tucked away at the end of a long tunnel built into the mountain below. Jeez, this has given me some real evil villain's lair vibes. But what's actually in the palace itself? Well, a lot. Though cameras aren't allowed inside, some sneaky individual leaked floor plans and has made renders of the rooms from them. There's a super fancy reading room, a pool, a bar, a casino, a fully fledged theater, and, well, tons more. My favorite is the hall with a dance mat in it, though. Yep, you heard correctly. Who'd have thought Putin was a whiz at Dance Dance Revolution? Not me. Clue in the Cliff You might have heard of the White Cliffs of Dover an eight-mile stretch of sheer rock hundreds of feet high on the coast of southeast England. I bet you haven't heard of the vast secret complex of tunnels hidden within them, though. Halfway up the face of one of the cliffs, a strange box-like shape juts out. If you're a seasoned climber with the right equipment, it's possible to get up to this point and crawl through the hole in the center. Once you do, you'll find yourself face-to-face -face with a long, narrow tunnel descending deep into the rock. And it goes on, and on, and on. So what's the deal with this place? Any guesses? No? Okay, well, it actually dates back to the Second World War. Convinced that the German army would try to land on the beaches below the cliffs, the British built a series of observation and machine gun posts into the side of them. This one was made to house a gun and would have originally been accessed by a scent-sealed entrance. The cliffside hideout not only offered a great vantage point, but would have also been near impossible to attack from head on. That's pretty genius. Luckily, all their effort was for nothing, though. The attack never came, but the tunnels remain today as a strange reminder of the bygone conflict. All I'm saying is I know where I'm going if there's ever a zombie apocalypse. Hunker Bunkers while trekking across the Gesterntal Valley in the Swiss Alps, one Flickr user was shocked to see this in a dark hole in the side of the mountain. On closer inspection, he realized it was a surveillance camera. Okay, I'd be getting out of there ASAP. But the spy cam isn't actually anything dodgy. That hole leads down into an underground fallout shelter. 
You see, over in Switzerland, there are about 20,000 public bunkers and hundreds of thousands more private ones, most of which are designed to protect the country's citizens from nuclear attack. But head to Air Gorge in the center of the country and you'll find something altogether different. Torrential waters carved this magical looking place into the limestone at the end of the Ice Age some 10,000 years ago. You can explore most of its natural beauty, but look in the right place and you'll notice one inaccessible hole in the side of the rock. Look closer and you'll realize it has a brick wall at the back of it. Hmm, believe it or not, this is, yep, another bunker. This one was built in the lead up of the Second World War and was apparently super luxurious, with a fully furnished recreational room and wood-lined walls. Somehow, I doubt it's that luxurious now, but there's no way of finding out unless you fancy a dangerous swim through rushing ice-cold waters. Yeah, I think I'll pass. Lake of Doom Lakes are often seen as places of peace and tranquility. But there's one lake over in the northern Indian Himalayas that has a much darker reputation. Known as Rupkund, it's nestled between rocky glaciers over 16,000 feet above sea level, and it harbors a scary secret. If you were to walk towards its edge and take a dip, your feet wouldn't touch the bottom. They'd touch one of hundreds of human skeletons instead. Yikes. The lake was brought to the people's attention back in 1942 when a forest ranger discovered the grizzly remains submerged beneath its waters and scattered around the area. However, the bones themselves are much older, dating from between 200 and 1200 years ago. So what the heck are they all doing down there? Well, mysteriously, there are head injuries on most of the skulls which look like they were made by round objects. This has led people to speculate that some kind of freak hailstorm is responsible or rather, many freak hailstorms over a long period of time. Even so, we don't have a solid answer. Why would so many weirdly powerful hailstorms happen in such a specific place? And why did that place draw so many people to it, only for them to ultimately be doomed? This is around 300 people we're talking about, all wiped out, all in one tiny lake at the top of the Himalayas. I don't know, just thinking about it is giving me the heebie-jeebies. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. The Ancient Child I'll be the first to admit I'm not exactly the bravest of the bunch, but there's one thing that terrifies me more than anything else, caving. It's dark, dangerous, and super claustrophobic, so I'd have never been able to head deep inside the rising star cave system in South Africa's Malmani Dolomites. American archaeologist Becca Piotto, however, was on a mission. You see, despite being tight and extremely treacherous, Rising Star has been the site of some incredible archaeological discoveries, and Becca wanted to find more. So back in 2021, she descended into the rocky cavern to see what secrets it holds. After making her way through the narrow, maze-like system, she hit what appeared to be a dead end. However, a long, narrow crack ran down the middle of the rock with just barely enough space to squeeze through. Unperturbed, she did something I'd never do, squeezed herself completely into the tiny six inch gap. For some perspective, that's a gap the same size as half a foot long Subway sandwich. Jeez. Though the idea of getting lodged in a minuscule crevice deep within an underground cave is my idea of hell, Becca actually found something and managed to slide out with it, a small odd looking skull. It turns out it belonged to a young Homo Naledi, a relative of modern humans that lived in South Africa some 350,000 years ago. Considering how fragile children's bones are, the fact it's in such good condition after all this time is amazing. But more perplexing is why the skull was found without the rest of the body, suggesting it was purposefully placed in the crevice. Ugh. Okay, I'm getting the creeps again. This probably wasn't dark magic or a deranged ancient killer though because Homo naledi were social creatures like us, it's more likely evidence of some kind of burial ritual. Phew, even so, hats off to Becca, or rather, heads off. Okay then, that's about all the secrets I've got for you this time. Which did you find the most fascinating? Let me know down in the comments below, and thanks for watching.